Thank you for trusting Aurora Rally Equipment Products and welcome to the Aurora family. This video will show you a step-by-step -step installation for the Aurora 701 Light Kit. Start by carefully opening the kit box. Take out the kit parts and put them on a clean surface. Here is a list of the tools you need to install the kit on your bike. Start disassembling the bike by removing the light mask. Remove these three bolts by using a T30 Torx socket. Unhook the brake line and front wheel speed sensor from the mask guide. Pull the mask towards the front fender. Unplug the light harness. Carefully cut and remove every zip tie that keep the cables in place. Remove the warning lights by gently pulling them out of the white housing. Remove and unplug the pressure sensor. Remove the three plugs from the metal bracket. Unplug all the cables using a flat screwdriver to press on the locking mechanism of each plug. Undo the two screws that keep the metal bracket in its place, and then the two screws that support the mask on the top clamp. The cables of the right switch pass through the mask, ending at the left side of the bike near the steering head. In order to remove them, you must remove the left side radiator shroud. Start by taking out the seat. Then undo these four bolts using a T30 Torx socket. Remove the radiator shroud. Undo the three bolts, unplug the three hoses, and remove the plastic frame cover. Carefully remove the two plugs of the right switch using a flat screwdriver by pressing the plug lock and pulling the connectors apart. Remove the brake line and front wheel speed sensor from the cable guide. Remove the ABS switch and release the mask from the switch cables. Carefully and slowly remove the main harness from the mask. Make sure you have cut the main zip ties that keep the harness in its place on the mask. Remove the flash relay. Use a marker to draw a line that you will use as a guideline to cut the mask in order to create an opening for the brake lines so that you separate them from the mask. If you don't feel like cutting the mask, you will have to remove the brake line from the front caliper and the master cylinder in order to be able to separate these two parts. Remove the speedometer from the mask by removing the two torque screws. Remove the warning lights and the turn indicators. the indicators on the Aurora navigation tower. Take care of the cables, they can easily be damaged. 
Be careful not to bend the fins on the tower. Do not pull or push them in any direction. Install the warning lights in any of the five available slots on the navigation tower. We recommend installing the supplied retaining rings to secure the warning lights in their place, otherwise they can generate a rattling noise. Time to install the original speedometer on the Aurora speedometer mount. Remove the mount from its bag and put the supplied rubber grommets in the holes using a small set of pliers. Put the speedometer on the mount and use the original screws to secure it in place. Do not over tighten. If your bike's model is 2020 or newer, follow this procedure to install the spider clamp. Remove the air filter cover. Remove the air filter. Remove the two bolts that keep the coolant expansion tank in place. Remove the two bolts of the ignition switch. Pull the switch out of the frame. Install the rear part of the spider clamp over the switch. This must be done carefully in order not to scratch the paint of the frame. Install the switch back on the frame using the supplied bolts that came with the spider clamp. Install the bolts of the coolant expansion tank. Carefully place the supplied U-bolt on the frame, taking care not to scratch the paint. Put the spider clamp in place and hand tighten the nuts on the U-bolt. Don't forget to install the wide washers first. Install the long bolts and the spacers on both sides. Set your torque wrench to 25 Newton meters and start tightening the two top bolts. When finished, tighten the U-bolt nuts using the same torque value. In both cases, follow the on-screen procedure and apply the torque gradually to each side of the spider clamp. If your bike was constructed between 2016 and 2019, follow this procedure to install the spider clamp. Use a 3mm drill to create a hole in the four plastic covers two on each side. Going towards installing the spider head clamp, use a small pair of pliers to remove the four small M6 plastic covers from the frame. Using an M6 bolt, clean the thread of all mounting points by screwing the bolt all the way in and out. Blow air if need be to clean the hole from any debris. Remove the spider head clamp from its bag and disassemble it. Remove the U-bolt and the four screws from it. Discard the plain nuts. They are only there to keep the assembly together. Install the U-bolt on the bike. There's no need to take out or undo the bolts of the radiator expansion tank. Install the spider head clamp by mounting the nylock nuts on the U-bolt. At this phase, there's no need to use a ratchet. Just hand tighten it. Install the four M6 bolts that align the head clamp on the steering head. 
Leave them loose enough for the head clamp to be able to move back and forth. Start tightening the M8 nylock nuts on the U-bolt, trying to keep the same amount of thread visible on both sides. Check the alignment of the head clamp using the M6 bolts on each side as a reference. When the nuts start to push the head clamp on the steering head, switch to a torque wrench. Set it at 25 Newton meters. The final result should look like this. If the alignment is not acceptable, loosen the nuts, change the position, and repeat. Mount the speedometer in its position using the supplied bolts. If you are using a handlebar riser, make sure the speedometer doesn't touch the steering clamps. If it does, push it away to create a small gap between them. Prepare the navigation tower for installation. Start by removing the M8 plain nut that keeps the tower in shape when new. Remove the two head clamp M8 mounting bolts from the tower. Align the tower with the head clamp and insert the mounting bolts into position from the right side of the bike. A torque wrench should be used. Set it at 25 Newton meters and secure the tower in place. First tighten the upper bolts, then the lower. Now tighten all the other M8 bolts using the same torque value of 25 Newton meters. Take off the lower cover of the tower by removing the four M6 bolts. Install the plug and play wiring harness. Mount all the wiring plugs of the switches, the flash relay, indicators, speed sensor, etc. Use zip ties to secure them on the tower. Use EVA foam on the plastic connectors to avoid rattling noises from the tower. Take your time. Do not rush and be careful not to damage any cables. Put back the lower cover and tighten the four M6 bolts. The switch cable should be inserted into the tower through the same opening as the Speedo cable. The main harness goes under the tower, between the tower and the lower cover. Again, use EVA foam if you want to further protect the main harness. Mount the cable guide on the left fork, just below the lower triple clamp, using the supplied bolts. Do not over tighten, this is just a guide. Remember to put the brake line and the speed sensor cable in the guide before screwing it fully in. If your bike is a 701, follow this procedure to install the side panels. Put the fairing mounts on the radiator. Remove the M5 plain nuts that keep the bolts in place. These will not be used. On both fairings, there's one hole that's not drilled by Aurora Rally equipment. Before drilling a 10 millimeter hole on them, make sure you mark the correct point by putting the fairing on the bike and checking its position. The easiest way to put the stickers on the fairings is to use soap mixed with water. First, you must clean and wipe the surface of the fairing. Remove the glue cover from the sticker and spray some soap with water on the glue surface. Put the sticker on the fairing and push on the surface towards the edge of the sticker, forcing the water and the air to get out. Use a soft cloth when doing so and be careful not to scratch the coating on the stickers. Use the heat gun to dry the trapped water and continue to push on the surface towards the edge until all the bubbles with water and air disappear. Repeat the procedure with all the remaining stickers.
Be extra careful with the heat gun. If you hold it very close to the sticker, you may damage it permanently. When finished, clean the fairing with some soap and wipe until it dries. Install the front side panels on the bike using the supplied quarter turn bolts and the four original bolts, two on each side. Put the six well nuts in the pre-drilled holes. Install the screen on the bike. First, make sure the aluminum pins at the upper part of the tower meet the holes on the screen. Secure the quarter turn bolts and install the six Torx bolts on the sides of the screen. The kit comes with two bolts. The other four are from your own bike. When you remove the radiator shrouds, there were two bolts on the front of the shrouds. Use these to complete a set of six bolts for the screen. If your bike is a 701 long range, follow this procedure to install the side panels. Remove these four bolts using a 10 millimeter wrench. Start installing the right side bracket by putting in place the larger spacer and its bolt. Leave the bolt loose for now. Install the small spacer and its bolt in the front mounting point. Start tightening the bolts. First, tighten the front mount, then the rear. Follow the same procedure to install the left side bracket. Install the screen on the bike. Secure the screen bolts. When the bolt receptors are new, you may need to help them a bit by pushing them forward from their backside while turning the bolt at the same time. Install the right side panel on the screen by using the supplied bolts. Follow the same procedure to install the left side panel. Align the side panel with the bracket mount and screw the lower bolts. Repeat this procedure on the other side of the bike. There's no need to remove the rear side panels. You can install the stickers on the bike with the rear panels on. Just take care to match the shape of the original sticker. It will take a full day for the glue to achieve full adhesion, so it's better not to ride the bike until the next day. Check the alignment of the screen and tighten the aluminum pins at the top of the tower. Next, you have to tighten all the M6 Allen bolts on the tower. Torque them to 8 Newton meters. Tighten the top anti-vibration mounts for the instrument backplate. Remove the four M6 bolts that will be used to secure the instrument backplate. Unpack the instrument backplate and put the extra rubber grommets where needed, depending on your navigation hardware. Install the bracket on the bike using the four M6 bolts. Do not fully tighten.
Remove the four bolts that keep in place the small bracket with the warning and the ABS lights. Use a ratchet and tighten the lower anti-vibration mounts of the instrument backplate. Put the small bracket back into place. Don't forget to tighten the top mounts of the instrument backplate. Put the seat back in place. Push the two pins at the front of the seat through the rubber grommets of the side panels. Be careful, if you apply too much pressure, you may damage the side panels. Use both hands supporting the panel from the inside when pushing the seat pin. Now the bike is ready, but remember, you have to wait for the sticker set to dry. So no riding until tomorrow. If you need more help, feel free to send us an email or call us. Thank you for choosing Aurora Rally Equipment.